Cosmic Mother by Monica uh, Sue and Barbara Moore and it's it's one of the most important books I've ever read to be honest and it's highly recommended by myself um, it's it's a classic exploration of the goddess through time and throughout the world and it draws on religious cultural and archaeological sources to recreate the goddess religion that is humanity's heritage now with the new introduction of um, this passionate important text shows even more clearly that the religions of the goddess which is tied to the cycles of a woman's bodies the, the, the seasons the phases of the moon and the fertility of the earth was the original religion of all humanity so it's it's a brilliant read um, what I want to say is um, how, how I got onto this book was when I discovered the word part in the Genesis and uh, according to Collins English Dictionary, part in the Genesis is um, a type of reproduction that occurs in insects and flowers in which unfertilized ovum develops directly into an individual. But I, what I have to say about that is um, there's no mention of um, the human beings. Um, part in the genesis in human beings, but like nature can't lie nature will never lie and if you want the truth look to nature and You know like we were told um, the beginning of the year is the first of January yet We see the flowers cross-pollinating and the insects and everything blooming um, at, In springtime it blooms new life is associated with springtime uh, March April time and it's very ironic when you look at the financial years ever so funny because the financial year is still kept in spring yet the rest of us are told that the new year's in january <laughs> so um yeah so according to um um as i started to realize about past in the genesis um i looked um beyond what was given i looked outside the box and it took me back to um uh, ancient Egypt Kemet and um, one of the main symbols for ancient Egypt is um, the scarab beetle as is shown on this book the Isis thesis okay and this according to Collins English it says the scarab beetle is, um, a, is especially the sacred scarab is regarded by the ancient Kemetians as divine and the scarab is always usually represented on the ambulance in 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 that time but why is this why is this so um the great cosmic mother um was able to answer a lot of these questions and it, it's a brilliant e excellent um read it's it's broken up into sections so i'm only going to do one section today because um i don't want to carry on for too long but hopefully another day i'll do another part and but I'll just read out the contents anyway. And the first bit I'm going to deal with today is women's early culture, the beginnings. But there's also women's early religion, um, women's culture and religion in Neolithic times, patriarchal culture and religion. And so today I'm going to deal with women's early culture, the beginnings. And it says um, under that section, there's the first sex in the beginning we were all created female then there's Marx and matriarchy um, the original black mother women as culture creators and the first speech and when I read it um, I'm just gonna s tell you what I've highlighted um, which stuck out to me and I mean all of it is just brilliant 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 read but um, in sex in the first sex in the beginning we were all created um female and it says that um because the longest period of one's life on earth was dominated by marine forms reproducing parthenogenetically he um it's concluded that the female principle was primordial okay in in the beginning life did not gestate within the body of any creature but within the ocean womb containing all organic life 
there was no specialized sex organs, rather a generalized female existence reproduced itself within the female body of the sea. Okay, and then it goes on and it says, um, a more complex life form could um, develop and move on to land. And it says, uh, yeah. And it says, of evolution, the ocean, the protective and nourishing space, the amniotic fluid and even the lunar tidal rhythm was transferred into the individual female body. And the penis, a man mechanical device for land reproduction, evolved. So the penis first of appeared in the age of the reptiles about 20 million years ago. Our archetypal association of the snake with the phallus contains no doubt this genetic memory. And it, it goes on and that's just um, that's page two. And it goes on and it says that every female egg contains a polar body with a complete set of chromosomes. The polar body and the egg, if unified, could form a daughter embryo. In fact, the ovarian cysts are unfertilized eggs that have joined with their polar bodies and been implanted in the ovarian wall and started to develop there. But this is not to say that males are an unnecessary sex. Parthenogenesis is a cloning process, sexual reproduction which enhances the variety and health of the gene pool is necessary for the kind of complex evolution that has produced the human species. The point being made here is simply that when it comes to the two sexes, one of us has been, a lo has been around a lot longer than the other. Okay, and th I, th I found that very interesting, you know, because we're, we're told that, um, you know, the rib was taken from Adam and then it, it formed Eve. So I found that very... Um, nourishing to my uh, psyche and then it says um it goes on it says uh, for all we know that that the near eastern myths upon which western mythologies are built those which portray that the young god or hero battling against the female dragon have some analog here in the urethra where the f male fetus wages a kind of chemical war against the re-becoming female so that's the battle i think that they talk about against the dragon um and it goes on it's a lovely read i, I, I recommend that everyone try and get hold of this book and it says uh, let's have a look da, 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 da. if we wanted to reduce one of the sexes to a purely um, reproductive function on the basis of its anatomy and we don't it would be the male sex that qualified for this for such a reduction not the female and not and definitely not the human female and it talks a little bit about um how women have been just reduced to being um you know uh sexual objects and um, are not really being recognized for who and what they really are. Um, it goes on about uh, female circumcision uh, and so on, but it, it, very good, excellent. Um, and the least through hypocrisy and racism, we dismiss that these practices as merely barbaric and ancient. We must recall that the um, clitoridectomy dectomies were uh, performed in the last century on young girls and women in both Europe and America. This surgery, very popular in the 19th century Victorians, was afflicted on any young woman considered to be oversexed or as punishment for masturbation or as a cure for madness. These determinations were all made by male relatives, male physicians, male clerics, male everything, and the woman involved had no legal right to say anything on the matter. <coughs> and then it talks, um, another chapter is called Marx and Matriarchy. Okay, and that's very good as well. Um, 
with, and it, it it focuses on women of the the third world and well women all over the world but definitely women in the third world and then there's another chapter here called the the original black mother and it says it is possible that the religious ideas of ancient crete and kemet originated in black africa during 700 to 6 Six, 7,000 to 6,000 BC, the Sahara was a rich and fertile land and a great civilization flourished there. Images of the horned goddess, which came, which became Isis of Kemet, had been found in the caves on a now inaccessible plateau in the center of what is now called the Sahara Desert. When the earlier f fertile land dried out, Probably as a result of the climatic change, the people spread out from this center and wherever they settled, they brought with them the religions, the religion of the black goddess, the great mother of Africa. And great importance has always been given to the queen mother across the continent of Africa. The original black goddess was regard regarded as bisexual, the instrument of her own fertility, and she was the ancient witch which carried the snake in her belly. Mm -hmm. Africans worship her for many uh, manifestations. The creator of the gods um, of the Homi, of the homie for example was maui lisa imaged as the serpent um, and maui lisa was both male and female self-fertilizing seen as the earth and the rainbow africans believe that the earth is ultimately more powerful than the sky and its gods the sky can be withhold the the sky can withhold rain but the earth is a source of the life force itself. The Gaia hypothesis of modern environmental science confirms this ancient concept. The sky with all its dramatic life-giving movement is in fact created by the earth and the envelope of air and moisture surrounding us is really the earth's breathing. As in ancient African beliefs, the sky gods are creations of mother earth she breeds them out and can breed them back in again great works needs to be done in the study of indigenous african mythologies and religious belief especially in linking these with the development of other world religions for just for such a physical humankind probably for just as physical humankind probably began in africa so no doubt did our concepts and our images of sacred originate there one black historian who has investigated the african origins of kemet the mediterranean and near eastern religions including christianity john g jackson though his work in 1972 um on african or origins of the world culture is titled man god and civilization jackson fully acknowledges the matriarchal origins and the influences of african society he quotes lewis h morgan sir james g fraser robert buffont and points out that their investigation of early group marriage and also the primacy of lunar based religions throughout the world are confirmed by early African material focal um, mm -hmm. cultures and it just goes um, deeper into that it starts to talk about the Yoruba um, with its channeled network of lakes on the coast and it reaches to the Niger Yoruba whose peculiarities are not just inadequately depicted in the platonic account this Yoruba, I assert, is Atlantis, the home of the Poseidon territory, the sea god by them named Oko Kun, uh, the land of the people of whom Solon declared that they have been extended their lordship over Kemet and Tyrene. And it goes on. I mean, it's just a beautiful read. Just a, it's a it's a lovely, lovely. Um, it's just a beautiful read about um, a woman and the original black mama. Um, I love uh, that. Um, uh, and then it says, um, women as culture creators. 
and this is um, a brilliant chapter as well because it talks about the women being um, uh, the creators, the first hunters, the first gatherers. Um, uh, well, no, while the men were out hunting and whatever, the, ch the moms had to keep the children occupied and keep them, you know, quiet, singing, um, nursery rhymes, uh, passing on the culture, oral culture, um, you know. And so that's how they, they reckon women as culture create, um, in, uh, invented um, speech. <coughs> The speech came about um, out of this because when the men were away in the bush um, hunting, they had to be very quiet to um, uh, go and hunt uh, the animals. You couldn't make too much noise, so the men had to be very quiet. Whereas the women, they, they, they stayed behind and they looked after the children and they had to keep them entertained. And so that's where the oral culture and that's where language develops.